what I have for you guys today, the use of subscripts and pointers. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. Here we go, indirect addressing. So anyway, this is uh, dealing with indirect addressing. So we saw direct addressing last week. Uh, direct addressing is something that we also looked at before we went into the break. So that was kind of like a review, which is simply using the name of your array uh, in order to move to the next item. So that's all right, uh, right? So this is uh, simply saying, well, I have an array called val, val1, and I am going to uh, move along the array by knowing what this, the, the size of the type it is. So if it's a byte, I move plus one, plus two, plus three. But if it's a, a word, then you move two at a time. So it will be val1 plus two, plus four, plus six, plus eight. And if it's a double word, then you move four at a time, four, eight, 12, 16, so on and so forth. So that is one way. Uh, the other way was by using offset. So using it this way was simply using the name of the array and using it with offsets by, was by looking at the address of the item in the array and moving the same way. So now let's look at what is called um, indirect addressing. And indirect addressing, and I'll make this a slightly larger here. For using of indirect uh, addressing, we need to use a register that we're going to be using as a pointer. And we're using our operands and what we call indirect operands. So the registers that were used for indirect addressing are your general, uh, your general register, EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX, either at their 32, 16, or uh, 32 or 16 bit level. And you have also the following um, segment registers and pointer registers. So we have the ESI, EDI, and EBP and ESP. So these are our segment registers that we use for indirect addressing. All right. Um, these registers, what we'll, what we'll be storing inside of these registers is the address of the variable. Okay, so we're gonna be taking an offset value to uh, move those addresses into these particular registers. So here's an example, okay? So we declare an array called byte array, and it's a byte in size. So each one of these takes a byte. It's got three items in the array. And the first thing that we do is that we get the offset or the address of byte array. So in this particular case, let's say the address of byte array is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So that address is now placed inside of ESI, the ESI register, okay? Now we're going to move, we're gonna to go to the address that's stored in ESI, which is location 0, 0, 0, 0, and those brackets right here, are gonna indicate that we're going to look at the value that's inside of that address, okay? So having that, then we're gonna move the value inside of AL. So we move those 10 hex inside AL, okay? This doesn't follow that rule. Remember that when we're using the, the MOV, there's the rule that they have to be the same size. How come ESI is the 32-bit, but AL is the 8-bit? Well, remember that here, ESI, yes, I know it's the 32-bit register, but we're not really using it to store a value. We're using ESI to store an address, and an address doesn't have a type. An address doesn't is not a byte, or it's not a double word, or a quad word. An address is just an address in memory, okay? So that's why this is allowed. If this was just, if I would have just put MOV AL comma ESI without the brackets, then it would be an error. We can't do that because as you know, they have to be the same size. Both of them have to be eight bits or 16 bits or 32 bits. But because this is the address, it's okay, okay? So now what we're doing here is that we are increasing ESI. The next one, notice this, this is ESI without the brackets. 
all right? So if this was a location zero, so then it increases by one, so now it'll be at location zero, 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 one, okay? And of course, uh, location zero, 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 one uh, is um, the next location in my array, okay? Which is uh, item 20. So now we're going to uh, address 0001. We look at what's inside of that address because it's got the brackets. What's inside of that address is the 20 hex and that is what is being placed into my AL. And then we can continue that way until we finish the whole array. Questions? Well, uh, we Go what? around the uh, size requirement. Right? Uh, well, or yeah, in, in a way, yes, in a way. Uh, but again, remember that this ESI, bracket ESI has nothing to do with sizes. So, you know, if this was an array of words, then we cannot do increased ESI, okay? Because ESI goes, Remember that INC increases one at a time. Yes. And right here, we don't have a problem because this is an array of bytes. So it goes one byte at a time. But if this was an array of, of doubles, okay, uh, uh, sorry, not doubles, an array of words, an array of words is two bytes, okay? So then we couldn't really increase ESI because ESI would go from zero to one and that wouldn't give you the next location, okay? so what we do then is we increase by two or we add two to ESI. So, all right. Um, did that answer that question? Yeah. Okay, all right. Or not question, it was more like a comment, right? But yes, okay. All right, so when do we use those brackets and when don't we use the brackets? Again, remember that brackets means What's inside of that address? Without brackets, I mean, without brackets, it could just be a number. I could store a number inside ESI and it would be okay. But if I want it to be an address and I want to see inside the value that's inside, then we use our brackets. So look at the following example. Here, right, and we did this. So this is the same example as up here, right? So here, this one is slightly different, okay? Notice that here we're saying byte array, right? What is the offset? And let's say that the address or the offset is 0000, okay? So it moves the address, the memory address 0000 into ESI. No problem. Now, now I'm going to increase ESI, but I am increasing ESI with the brackets. So really what I'm saying here is go to location zero, look at what's inside and try to increment what's inside. All right, so in this case, if we were using uh, the example of this array over here, it would, quote unquote, would try to increase from 10 to 11 hex, which, I mean, if you're looking at it that way, you say, well, I can go from 10 to 11, but it's incorrect. This method will actually give you an error and it will give you an error because in reality your assembler doesn't know if you're supposed to be uh, looking at what's inside it's either a byte a word or a double word or a quad word nowhere in this code are you telling it that byte array is holding byte items okay so in order to do something like this, if you want to increase what's inside, right, using this, this format, using the indirect addressing, then we use your pointer um, instruction, okay? So notice how this one says, remember PTR? PTR is uh, typecasting, okay? So what we're saying here is, Go to location 0000, look at what's inside, right? Typecast it to be a type of byte, now increase it, 
So now you go to, you know, 10 hex to 11 hex as opposed to, you know, going from location one to location uh, two, so on and so forth. All right. So again, this uh, uh, here in the both examples, um, this one right here goes from locations of zero to locations of one to locations of two. This one here goes to the location zero and increments what's inside. Okay. All right. <clears throat> there is another way uh, that we can use for working with arrays, and this is called indexing, right? Which is the what we're used to doing. So in C++, every time that we would work with an array, we would say uh, array sub zero, array sub two, array sub three, right? So this is called in assembly indexing or indexed operands. And it's quite simple, and it would be, like I said, more familiar to what we're used to doing. So um, in here, we declare our array. Uh, this is a double word array, and it's got four items. Starts at location zero, or you know. So notice what we're doing here. We're saying put a zero inside of ESI. Why? Because this is the subscript. So put subscript zero into ESI. Okay. Now, what we're doing is we're looking at array sub zero. That's pretty much what this is saying. Array sub zero, all right, which is the 100H, and move that into EA, EAX. Okay. So again, this one stores the value inside location sub zero into EAX, which is familiar to how we use arrays in C. Right, slightly different from from this, right? I mean, I mean, after a while, this this can make a little bit of sense, but this one is more to what we're used to. Okay, so how do we go to the next one? In this particular case, it's a double word. Okay, that means it's it's this one is the thirty-two bit. Okay, so that means we move four at a time. Okay, so if we're going to array sub one. And we would say keyword array ESI plus four. All right. And for the next one would be ESI plus eight. Notice that both are inside the parentheses. Why? Because this one without the parentheses is incrementing your index. And then the uh, brackets, the brackets look as what's inside of that index and uh, you move it into EA, EAX. So that would be those 300. So for the next one, it would be ESI plus 12, okay? Simple? It's pretty simple, I think. <clears throat> the problem here, right? I mean, because this is pretty simple, uh, uh, Syntax. The problem is that this is a small array. It's only four items. So it goes from zero to three, which is great. What if you had an array of 100 items and you want to go through every single item in the array? Well, then that means you go the word array ESI plus 12, and then the other one would be sub ESI plus four, uh, 16, plus 20, plus 24, plus 28. So you have to do 100 lines of code in order to look at the 100 items in the array, which would be, you know, a lot. So there is an easier way, obviously, right? There's always another way to do this. And that is by using something called uh, scaling, okay? Or scale factors. And this is when we're looking at the type the data type of the array, and then we get uh, the subscript, and all we do is simply multiply that subscript by the type, the size of the the type size of the array. Uh, of course, this works much better with loops. Okay, we haven't looked at loops, but that's something that we're going to look right after this. Okay, so if we have the following bit of code, 
So it's the same array we looked at before, okay? Array, the word array is got four items. Notice that here we're moving the subscript three because there's pretty much uh, four items in the array, all right? So the subscript three into ESI. Now look at how we're doing the array uh, movement. So we're going to the array. We're looking at ESI, which has the number three inside, right? The number three inside. And then we say, well, what's the type of uh, the word array? The type is a double word. So that means it's uh, four. So what it does is that it multiplies that number four times your subscript, which is 12. Three times four is 12. So now we are at that location that we want, which is this location zero, location four, location eight, and now this is location 12. So this would move that 400H into our EA, EAX. Again, what if we have 100 items? Well, we don't show that in here, but you would have a loop and your loop would go, all right, you always have, you move a, a particular, your, your loop, instead of putting that constant three in there, you would put your counter there. So here would say move into ESI, the counter, whatever the counter is. And remember, which is the register that uses, that is used for counter? That would be your ECX register. The ECX register is by default the counter. Yes, you can use it for addition and subtraction and all that stuff. But if you're going to be using a loop, you reserve that one for a counter only. So you would put whatever is in ECX, which is the counter. And that way, the next time that your loop goes around, your counter will go to four. And then your counter will go to five and six and so on and so forth. So then you will always be multiplying that counter times in this particular case, four, because that's the, the size of the data type of your array. So you would go for the next one, four times four, 16, that would be the next value, five times four, 20, six times four, 24, so on and so forth. And that's how you would go through your array without having to write down 100 lines of code, or actually more, uh, because remember, it takes at least two of those in order to, you know, do your um, axes, right?